NATO considers option on sending troops to Ukraine. The North Atlantic Alliance allows the possibility of sending troops to Ukraine. This was said by French President Emmanuel Macron at a briefing after the conference in support of Ukraine, which was held in Paris. We have discussed this. So far, there is no consensus on sending troops, but nothing should be ruled out on this issue in the future. Macron said, as the French leader noted, two years ago, a number of European leaders said they would not supply Ukraine with tanks, aircraft and long-range missiles, but their stance has changed. Let's be modest enough to recognize that we have often been 6 to 12 months behind schedule. This was the purpose of today's discussion. Everything is possible if it is useful to achieve our goal, the French president said. Macron noted that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's request for increased support had been heard. The politician emphasized that Moscow had taken a hostile stance not only towards Kiev but also towards the entire West. I will not remove the ambiguity of today's debate by mentioning names. I say that it was listed among the options, he added. French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal has not ruled out the possibility of sending troops to Ukraine, according to West France. We cannot agree that Russia should win this war, that an authoritarian country should take control of a democratic country by force, because we stand behind Ukraine, he says. Atal emphasizes that Sweden and Finland are joining NATO because they see a threat from Russia. We have been supporting Ukraine since day one. We will continue to support Ukrainians, the Prime Minister adds. Ukrainian troops are facing 470,000 of Russian army, a stalemate in the US Congress over military aid and a lack of production capacity in Europe is leaving Ukraine with a war-critical shortage of artillery ammunition. This was stated by Jack Watling, a senior researcher at the Royal Research Institute of Great Britain, according to Time. There is already a shortage of ammunition along the entire front, which led to the recent withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from the city of Avdiivka, he noted. The expert recalled that the Ukrainian military is facing approximately 470,000 Russian soldiers who are attacking their positions. If Ukraine had enough artillery, these attacks could have been easily repulsed, as a few 155mm shells would have killed Russian soldiers as soon as they started advancing from their positions. But Ukraine is having to ration its units to fire only 2,000 rounds a day across a 750-mile front. Ukraine fields around 350 artillery pieces, so that in many areas of the front, Ukraine has no artillery at all. The shortage of guns and shells not only reduces Ukraine's ability to blunt Russian attacks, but also makes Ukrainian artillery more vulnerable to Russian Landsat 3M drones and counter-battery fire. Russia has more than 4,000 artillery pieces in Ukraine and is firing around 10,000 rounds a day across the front. The expert added that without enough ammunition, the Ukrainian military would have to take up more physical positions on the front to repel Russian attacks with small arms. Houthis shot down US MQ-9 Reaper drone in area near Yemen. The Houthis said they shot down a US MQ-9 Reaper drone off the coast of Yemen. According to US officials, the Pentagon is investigating the cause of the drone crash, the New York Times reports. The officials speaking on condition of anonymity confirmed that the MQ-9 Reaper drone went down. Iran-backed militants said that they had shot down a drone near the port city of Al-Hudaida in western Yemen. If the Houthis' claims are true, it will be the second time the group has shot down a US drone since Hamas attacked Israel on October the 7th. The downing of a Reaper drone, the mainstay of the US military's air surveillance fleet, marks the latest escalation between the US and Iranian-backed groups in Yemen, Iraq and Syria. These episodes have intensified over the past two months, highlighting the risk that the conflict between Israel and Hamas could escalate into a wider one. One of the American officials speaking on condition of anonymity reported that the American General Atomics drone was shot down near Hodeida. Another official said that the drone was shot down by a Houthi surface-to-air missile launched from the Hodeida area. In November of last year, the Houthis shot down another MQ-9 drone. 
The Houthi militants said that they had attacked the Rubimar cargo vessel in the Gulf of Aden, which was at risk of sinking. Since November of last year, Houthi attacks on trade ships related to Israel in the Red Sea have continued, 